This is Dr. Amir Jamali. The title of this presentation is Understanding MRI Images. Medical imaging really started with plane radiographs, which were developed in the late 1890s. With a plane radiograph, an X-ray beam is passed through the body and picked up on a film or sensor on the other side of the body. This is a standard radiograph of a right shoulder. One can see that the more dense structures, which have more calcium, such as the bone, show up as a white area, and the less dense structures, such as the soft tissues or the air, show up darker. This is the basis of how plane radiographs work. Advanced imaging really started with the CT scanner, which uses x-rays and a computer to develop a cross-sectional image of the tissue. This laid the groundwork for future advances, such as MRI. This is an example of a CT scanner, where the patient lies on a platform and is pulled with the platform into a tubular structure. The CT scanner has an x-ray unit which spins around the patient and passes x-rays through multiple different directions. The computer then integrates those images into a cross-sectional image which is the output of the scanner. This is an image of a CT scan of, the, of a left shoulder. Much like the plain x-ray, the dense structures such as the bone show up as white, while the less dense structures such as muscle and skin show up as gray. The air, which has the least amount of density and blockage to x-ray, shows up as black. We can see this in the lung or in the surrounding air. MRI, or magnetic resonance imaging, is a revolutionary technology for imaging the body. It does not use x-rays, but rather a magnetic field to generate cross-sectional images of body structures. The standard images that are generated by MRI are called axial images, and these are cross-sectional images taken from right to left across the body. These are essentially multiple images going from top to bottom across the body structure, in this case, a left shoulder. If we rotate this model, we can see how these cross-sections stack on top of one another and how they are oriented relative to the alignment of the body itself. MRI allows the tissue to be imaged in multiple different orientations, meaning that the slice of tissue can be looked at from multiple different perspectives. In addition to the axial images, MRI provides us with coronal images, which are images taken in the frontal plane and moving back sequentially. This is an example of the same three-dimensional model, but now showing coronal images, which start from the front and move back sequentially. They are called coronal images because they are similar to the orientation of a crown, and this word comes from the Latin coronam, which is crown. Sagittal images are the third different type of orientation, and these are slices taken from front to back. Sagittal images are shown in this image of that same three-dimensional model with the orientation from front to back of each of the different imaging planes. As we rotate the model, we can see the orientation of the sagittal images. We will now discuss some examples of a shoulder MRI, specifically looking at axial images, coronal images, and sagittal images. This is an MRI of a right shoulder. We can see the image as a cross-section through the upper arm and shoulder. This is now a coronal MRI, and if we move from front to back, we can see that this is oriented as a frontal image, showing many of the same structures but in a different perspective. Finally, this is a sagittal image of the shoulder with a front to back orientation. In summary, we have discussed the three orientations for MRI images, which are axial, coronal, and sagittal. Thank you.